So you've probably seen the movie iRobot, and, and if you haven't, it's basically a movie about a guy that thinks robots are bad and they have potential to do really bad things. But nobody else thinks that. You know, they think they're totally safe. Look, have they ever killed a person? No. So why could they be bad? It, they, the people in the movie thought that it is impossible for robots to do bad. But then there was one robot that had the ability to think for himself. He had the ability to feel emotions. And he was able to go past what he was feeling. You know, because Sonny, you know, he, all the other robots, they couldn't feel emotions, but he could feel emotions and could act more or less human-like, and he actually saved the world. So, you know, and all the other robots, they were the ones that were destroying the world. If they turned bad, they turned bad. And they're also written with laws. You know, but Sonny, he felt emotions. You know, but what if we could take humans, put them in our cars or our computers? You know, we could scan your brain, take that brain. We could take that scan of your brain. You know, your brain, you know, your brain is code. Although it's not like a computer code, it's called brain code. Which basically, it's how your brain functions. So they could tell you if autism or ADHD or nonverbal learning disorder, which is what I have, you know, you can take that, you can take that reading and tell them if they're addicted to cocaine or not, so that way, or whether they're suicidal, so people don't have to suffer through addictions because they're too scared to tell anybody. You would know everything and you could find out stuff that you couldn't find out before, and there would be no trial and error. There were no people buying people dying of experimental drugs because it turns out that they were pretty good for rats, which is what we test a lot of things on, but they weren't good for humans. You know, I have normal learning disorder, so, I, so my brain would be more unique because it's kind of complex because everything I do is all scripted like a robot in code, although it's kind of like Sonny because he's coded the same way I'm coded, I'm coded sort, of, sort of like Sonny because my brain, I program everything same way he does. You know, he has, if you do this, you know what I mean? Because he got scared and he was angry, just like I am, you know, or how he acts to certain people. But he can change. The other robots, all they know how to do is do what humans tell them to and to obey the laws they're told. Whereas Sonny could choose to obey or disobey those rules, in which he was the only robot, you know, because the NS4s, which were the first generation robots, you know, they were so basic. They're like our robots today. You know, they can do stuff, but they just can't communicate. But then they got the more advanced ones. But they forgot to add all the emotion into the advanced robots. And the entire society almost crumbled. We as a people, just like the people in iRobot, you know, they don't think of anything as possible. You know, it's impossible. We did not tell those robots to disobey us, so how could they disobey us and do what they thought we meant? You know what I mean? Because they can't convey in motion. They're also kind of like me, because I don't convey tone of voice or body language that well. But most humans do. So, you know, all those old humans... You know, like us, you know, there's lots of things that we think is, are impossible because we have not discovered it. We created these so they cannot go against us. You know what I mean? Well, we created the atomic bomb, and what did that do? It killed a bunch of people. You know, we did not think it would create a bunch of people, but it did. And we don't always know the future. If you would ask people in, like, in the 1800s if it was possible to kill a few thousand people all at once in like half a second. You know, they wouldn't think it's possible. But once Einstein figured out how to create the atomic bond, that was then possible. It was not possible before then. Same thing with everything. There's lots of stuff that we think is impossible. I have people constantly telling me that that's impossible. Nothing is impossible, just they just didn't have all the tools. You know, all those people like Socrates, their ideas sparked the days, and without Watt and the guy who invented the microwave, you know, we could not produce food quite as fast. You know what I mean? 
Because, you know, when you have your, like, your chicken pot pie and it says, okay, 30 minutes in the oven. You know what I mean? It takes 30 minutes in the oven or like five minutes in the microwave. That's five minutes. So that means you could be done in a half hour rather than it take you at least 45 minutes to finish your chicken, your chicken pot pie in the toaster oven. Well, without the guy who invented the microwave, that would not be possible. You know what I mean? No one thought you could cook a meal in five minutes. People in the 1800s, I can almost guarantee you, would have told you you're crazy. So we should consider everything possible and nothing impossible. 